Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful day in the Lord today. We are a blessed people. You know, even with so much going on with the world and uh, their suffering and just terrible things, and my heart grieves with the Holy Spirit about those terrible things that people are suffering. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm so thankful that the Lord just watches over us and takes care of us. And uh, we are very blessed people to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do have favor from God above. And, you know, he wants us to ask him for what we need. And uh, when we uh, have attacks coming against us, he wants us to use our authority over those things. And he wants us to know scripture so that we can use scripture against those things. So I just pray that we're all stepping up a little bit more in our authority. It, we're just not in the days where it's um, ho-hum church. I hate to even say that like that, but I think you know what I mean. This uh, kind of go visit the church and then really do nothing for the Lord type thing. That just can't continue if it is what people are doing. We have to follow the Lord, learn what he wants us to do, and practice and exercise our faith. Just like when you exercise muscles, they get bigger. He wants us to exercise our faith, and we've got to push ourselves to do that. Well, we are reading chapter 18 of Acts, and we are reading about the faithful first disciples and apostles that uh, brought this word into their world, their known world. They were faithful to get it out there. And before the return of Jesus, which we feel is very soon, that is exactly what we should be doing, getting the word out there to people. So <clears throat> let's read chapter 18 and let's grow in the word. Chapter 18 of Acts. This will be Paul at Corinth and also at Ephesus. And uh, we really need to open up our hearts as we read these scriptures and, you know, do things the way the Lord tells us to do them instead of resisting the Holy Ghost and his leading. Really pray, before you read the word, pray that uh, the Lord will bring understanding and correction. You know, I prayed that the other day. There was something that I just kept having a problem with, um, that I just couldn't quite get. And I said, well, Lord, if, if I've just got this wrong, correct me. I don't want to keep thinking that someone else has it wrong if it's me. And, um, you know, it was kind of one of those things where I didn't have it wrong, but they sort of didn't either. I'm not going to go into the specifics of it right now. I'm still praying on it. But um, we need the Lord's instruction, and we don't need the critical judgment of other believers. We need to get the beam out of our own eyes. If we can then get it out and we understand Scripture, then we can help others. Chapter 18 of Acts. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them, and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. 
And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth I will go unto the, the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. So what happens when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? They uh, obey to have water baptism. Verse 9, Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee, for I have much people in this city. It's a wonderful thing when the Lord assures you he's with you, and you can go forth and not feel fearful. You just... No, he's anointed you for it, so it's his job to protect and cover you. Verse 11, And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drive them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him, before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of those things. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila. So he's been making tents with Priscilla and Aquila while he was at Corinth. And uh, they end up being valuable to him in the ministry. And they are now sailing with him into Syria, having shorn his head in Centria, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this peace that cometh in Jerusalem, that I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order strengthening all the disciples. So all these churches he's established, he's, he goes back to and encourages and strengthens them. Verse 24, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So Apollos is uh, well-versed in all of the Old Testament scriptures. He knows and he understands that. 
And so he has heard about Jesus. He has been baptized into John's baptism. But Aquila and Priscilla are teaching him, uh, you know, how it stepped forward after Jesus died. Jesus then commanded to be uh, baptized in his name and filled with the Spirit. As we get to Acts 2.38, the beginning of the New Testament church, Peter and the others have been baptized in the Holy Ghost with power, and they teach that. Acts 2.38 tells us to repent, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's really important for us to read these scriptures. There are just so many voices out there right now talking about how you need to serve the Lord, and uh, they're downplaying a lot of scripture. And uh, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So we need to know what he commanded in the New Testament, and we need to obey that. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Praise God. I do want to be obedient to the Lord. When I miss it, though, I know I have to repent. Repentance is still a part of my life. After all these years I've served the Lord, uh, I repent daily, Lord, wherever I missed it, wherever my I didn't cast out my imagination fast enough. I had a critical judgment against someone. I, I let the tape roll in my head again and feel bad about something that I've said. I put it away, but here goes the thought again. Whatever it is, we just want to be clean before the Lord and... Um, Yes, his blood is that cleansing power of salvation. But we have a real walk with the Lord, a real cross to carry for the Lord in serving him. And uh, we better not make light of it. We better be fervent and effectual before the Lord. Well, praise God. We don't want to be the loud to see in church. We don't want to be lazy about the things of God. And uh, I have to whip myself into shape. You know, I had one pastor say it this way uh, when he was getting lazy about his prayer life. He just told us we need to get ourselves by the ear and uh, take ourselves down on our knees and get busy praying. So, um, you know, Paul said it, that he buffeted himself. He didn't let his flesh get the upper hand. And many of us uh, walking in a lazy way with the Lord, we're serving our flesh. And the Lord wants us to sow to the Spirit and conquer our flesh. We are at war. The Spirit and the flesh war against one another. And the Lord wants us to be diligent to see that the Spirit wins out. The closer we stay to the Lord, the easier that is to do. I know I don't watch this man, but I, I just see his titles a lot. Vlad Savchuk. I maybe watched one thing where he and his wife were talking about dating one time. And uh, they did a really good job with that. But I don't follow them, but I know he's really been just seeing the headlines uh, of his videos pushing the fasting and drawing close to the Lord. And since the first of the year, I have felt that uh, draw near to me and I and he will if we draw near to God and he will draw near to us. Let me get my tongue untwisted there on it. That's what the Lord desires is for us to stay close to him, stay connected to the vine. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask what you will. So that's where we need to be and stay there in that place. Secret place with the Lord. Praise God. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Be blessed.